Seeing that Wuthering Waves is already being teased on the Epic Games Store, I think it's safe to say the game will be released in the near future, probably in May or June. However, there is one crucial thing that isn't really being addressed by the general public, and I believe it should be discussed not only more, but also in more depth. I'm speaking about the apology from Kuro Games and the 90% overhaul of the main story in Wuthering Waves. On January 19th, 2024, during an interview with the developer of Wuthering Waves, they acknowledged the content issues from the first closed beta and expressed their commitment to improving the game's narrative. This led to their official apology to the fans, players, and general public for these issues. So what does this mean for the story and state of the game then? Well, the rewrite aimed to address plot holes, enhance character development, and create a more overall engaging experience for players. This resulted in the second phase of the closed beta being released on February 19th, 2024, exactly a month after the apology and overhaul. Over 10 million people all over the world pre-registered to dive into this new reimagined world with new characters and deeper mysteries of the Calamant. But the question still stands, did the game actually improve? To answer this, we have to go backwards and dive into the previous story of Wuthering Waves. So briefly, the story went something like this. The story unfolds after the devastating event known as the Calamant, which raised the world, leaving it in ruins. Almost all human life was wiped out, and desperate survivors formed uneasy alliances to rebuild civilization. Among their efforts were the Resonators, humans fused with Wutherends, who could combat the monstrous creatures spawned by the Calamant. You assume the role of a mysterious newcomer known simply as the Rover. The Resonators closely monitor you due to the circumstances of your arrival. As you connect with the world, secrets about your past and the true nature of the Calamant begin to unravel. It's a pretty simple story arc, short, concise, and straight to the point. This might sound like all you need for a good foundation for a game, but it wasn't that simple. The game is not yet released to the general public. So there are few people who have actually compared this story to the rewritten one, and their views and opinions might not be relatable to yours. So the only way to really tell the difference is by experiencing it for yourselves. But until then, let's see how best we can prepare ourselves for the journey ahead. The new story arc goes something like this. The world of Wuthering Waves was once a thriving civilization, but it all changed when the Kalman struck over a century ago. This cataclysmic event brought forth strange beings, twisted landscapes, and chaos. The Kalman remains shrouded in mystery. Some believe it was a cosmic collision, while others think it was a rift in reality. Regardless, it left the world scarred and forever altered. They stuck to the general gist of the old story. Well, the origins at least, along with some tweaks. For example, the Calamant's sudden appearance changed the course of the world by almost wiping out human life indefinitely, leading to questionable alliances and the untrustworthy actions of the Resonators towards the main protagonist, Rover. But now, the Calamant struck centuries ago, which changed and shaped the world over time, and Rover's new purpose is to find and protect the Resonators, individuals who can manipulate the Calamant's energy. The Resonators themselves are even more important they are essential for maintaining balance and preventing further calamities. When it comes to the mystery part of the overhaul, the biggest indicator was how the world itself should be perceived. In other words, the world of Wuthering Waves is now a world of contradictions, as the serene beauty of its landscapes clashes with lurking horrors. Verdant hills, ancient forests, and crumbling cities coexist with nightmarish creatures. The game's art style reflects this duality. Vivid colors contrast with eerie shadows. This alone, to me, is a great take on a post-apocalyptic game like this. The developers still tried to display the beauty or diamond in the rough aspect of the game, which is something games like Genshin Impact have done exceedingly well. The rewritten story also introduces meaningful choices. Your decisions impact the world, relationships, and even the outcome of battles. Will you sacrifice a resonator to save others or seek a path of redemption? The consequences ripple through the narrative. This brings a lot of questions and attention around our main protagonist, Rover. Who is Rover? Why were they chosen? These questions linger throughout the game. As you explore, you should be able to piece together fragments of Rover's memories and purpose. As you can see, 
all these things sound great. It not only invites a deeper lore, but also stands out as a free-to-play story arc among the rest of its gotcha game titles. But will this game deliver on its promise? What do you think? Before we head out, let's just go through some additional plots we know are coming and answer the question of how long it will take to actually complete these quests. There are a number of new plots in the reworked Wuthering Waves, including titles like The Lost City of Ethereum, The Whispering Forest, The Veil of Illusions, The Council of Echoes, and The Forgotten Song. All these plots sound great and interesting, so let's see how good they really can be. If you guys want to know about these plots and what they're about, be sure to let me know in the comments, and I will be able to go in-depth with each and every one of them. The expected duration of Wuthering Waves can vary based on individual playstyles, exploration, and engagement with side quests. However, here's a rough estimate. Main storyline. If you focus solely on the main quests and follow the critical path, you can expect around 30 to 40 hours of gameplay. This includes unraveling the central mystery, encountering key characters, and progressing through the overarching narrative. Side quests and exploration. Wuthering Waves encourages exploration, engaging in side quests, discovering hidden locations, and interacting with NPCs can significantly extend your playtime. For the gamers who love fully completing games like these and want to explore every nook and cranny, the game could last 50 to 60 hours or more. In terms of additional content, keep in mind that developers often release updates, expansions, or additional content post-launch. These can introduce new storylines, areas, and challenges, further extending the game's longevity. Remember, the true magic of Wuthering Waves lies not only in its duration, but in the immersive world, intriguing characters, and the sense of wonder it evokes. So be sure to join me as I will be diving into the world of Wuthering Waves. I really hope you guys learned a bit more about Wuthering Waves in this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and make sure to stay tuned for more Wuthering Waves content. Have a great day. Peace out.